students let us continue with the object oriented analysis so in the previous video i explained about what is an object oriented analysis and i introduced the three techniques of object oriented analysis that is the object modeling dynamic modeling and functional modeling so i already explained about the first one that is object modeling now let us see the second one that is the dynamic modeling dynamic modeling so what is the what is the, uh, this technique will uh, use in a object oriented analysis so actually it is a way of explaining how single object is respond to event the main, the main aim here is going to explain explain how single object responds to responds to events okay so here the events are nothing but the activity occur at a point in time and coming to the main aim of, of dynamic modeling is to examine the main aim is examine sorry examine the behavior of object behavior of the object regarding time and external changes regarding time and external changes so that is the main aim of the uh, dynamic modeling the dynamic modeling main aim is uh, examining the behavior of the object so whatever the objects that are created in the uh, with the help of requirements so the it explains the behavior of the object regarding the time and external changes now let me explain uh, the example for this dynamic modeling is a process of uh, what is the process of dynamic modeling so the first thing is uh, the first step is uh, the state of every object is recognized first the state of every object is recognized okay so first i recognize the whatever the object that is present uh, in the requirements so that i'm going to create it so for that object the state has to be recognized and the second step second step is you have to recognize the event recognize the event why i have to recognize the event because I, dynamic modeling explains how single object is response to the events so that you have to recognize the events okay and the third one next third is uh, generate dynamic modeling diagram and close with the state transition diagram we have to generate after recognizing the event try to generate dynamic model diagram and close with and close with state transition diagram state transition diagram which is enclosed with the state transition diagram okay and the next fourth step the fourth step is uh, after generating the dynamic model diagram uh, which is enclosed with the state transition diagram you have to communicate with every uh, state regarding the object attribute next try to communicate with every state every state regarding regarding object attributes okay and lastly you have to do the fifth one is you have to verify the state transition diagram verify state transition diagram so this is a process flow of dynamic modeling first you have to uh, recognize the state of every object in which state is the object is present and after that you have to recognize the event for that objects and next is gen generate dynamic model uh, diagram enclosed with the state transition diagram after that you have to communicate with every state regarding the object attributes and finally verify the state transition diagram so this is the flow process flow of the dynamic modeling and coming to the third technique uh, that is functional modeling the third technique is functional 
modeling. So in the object oriented analysis, the third technique was the functional modeling. So what this functional modeling will do? It is the last component of object oriented analysis and it shows, it shows the process, the processes executed, executed in an object. It is going to show the process that are executed in an object and how the data change and how the data change when it moves between the methods when it moves between the methods so that you call it as a functional modeling now let us see the process of functional modeling let me write with an example the process of functional modeling first what you have to do first you have uh, the all input and outputs are to be recognized all input and outputs are recognized so with the help of the requirements you have to first recognize what are the inputs and what are the outputs that you have to be created so that you have to be recognized and the second step you have to create a data flow uh, flow diagram to show the functional dependencies between all the inputs so next you have to create uh, create a data flow diagram to show functional dependencies functional dependencies okay so after creating the data flow diagrams next uh, identify the motive motive of every function so what exactly that function is going to be do that you have to be identify identify the motive of every function okay you identify what is a function and what is the operation of the what is a what that function is going to be do so after that you have to identify the constraints also identify the constraints and finally describe the optimization criteria describe the optimization criteria so this is the functional modeling thank you